Okay, everyone. Hey, and welcome back to my channel. This is Toucan Zan here. We're picking up right where we left off at day 18, I think, of 30 of my 30 day challenge. I did have to take some time off because my computer couldn't handle doing the video editing for these, um, for these YouTube videos anymore. And I did get a new computer and it's fantastic. Hopefully you all have been keeping up with me and you know that. So I thought to kind of make up for my absence, oops, sorry for the for the muscle car noise, I thought to make up for my absence, I would do two pieces today. Um, so that's what we're doing, and they're all going to be kind of part of the same story, and I'll tell you a little bit more about the story when we get closer to the end of the video. For now, I am going to talk to you about uh, this speed paint process and what I did, and uh, I decided to try a different ink because my lovely partner, he has uh, the, oh gosh, how do I pronounce it? Did I say goosh? I think I just said goosh instead of gosh. Goosh, that's the thing. All right, so I use the Talons Drawing Ink, which people swear by for tattoos, which is funny because it says distinctly on the bottle. Why does it say? It says, do not use for tattoos, but everyone swears by it to get the black is black. So that's the ink that I'm using today, Talons Drawing Ink, and Mike has a big bottle. And um, I'm probably going to do another little video about this because I realize that I'm learning things as I go on that I feel like can help people and they're just silly little hacks that I feel like will help people out. So like if you're in a bit of a bind and you don't have an eyedropper to give you one or two drops of ink because honest to God, these drawing inks like the... the um, or the Higgins or Windsor and Newton or regular India ink or this Talon's drawing ink they are very pigmented and a little bit really goes a long way um, so I have one eyedropper in my house literally one I really just want to go ahead and buy some more so that I can do the ink dropping appropriately but uh, you don't need much water to thin these down um, and to, to get your wash levels. So what my partner suggested is he was like, um, take your little round palette, put one drop of ink in the first uh, round and then put your water in, two drops of ink in the second, three drops of ink in the third, and then in the, the last one, all you need, you just leave the ink without any water in it. And um, so that's what I tried to do, but I only had one eyedropper and I used that eyedropper specifically to activate my watercolors usually or to put water on top of my black ink and I didn't <laughs> I didn't want to muddy, muddy it up with my drawing ink or black ink because I knew it would be like the ink would just kind of stay in there I wouldn't be able to get the dropper really clean um, so do you know that trick where you take a straw and you like put put it in a liquid and you hold your finger at the top it creates a vacuum and it pulls whatever liquid into it and then you remove the straw from the liquid and you remove your finger and it'll drop the liquid that it accumulated in the straw out so if you're really in a bind and you don't have an eyedropper like me I found that that's something that can give you Ooh, that part is magical did you see that with the hair dryer that's like my favorite part when I am drying my ink <laughs> and the hair dryer goes and you can see that it just magically dries. That's so much fun for me. I hope that's fun for you to see too. Anyway, so yeah, that's a good way to kind of deal with not having an, an eyedropper really quick. But the best thing, honestly, is just, just get an eyedropper. Don't be like me. Don't be lazy. Um, so yes, using Talon's ink. And uh, that's it. Again, this was like trying to be super minimal, 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 minimalistic <laughs> color palette. Um, for this series, I want to kind of focus more on the mid-tones and creating depth with uh, foreground and background and mid-tone shadows and light and dark, and that's what I'm trying to do with the scene. Also, this is something very atypical for me, actually drawing a scene. Like, there's a bedroom, and there's... It's a girl sleeping in the bed, by the way. It's not two people having sex. That's what my partner thought it was. It's not that. Um, and yes, there is someone creepily standing outside of the window. Um, so when I was doing this, the first wash I did on the wall turned out really good. Um, and this time, instead of doing a dry on wet technique, I did a wet on wet. And I found that that worked really well for keeping things smooth. But as you can see at this point, 
the wash got a little bit messed up so I definitely still need to work a lot on getting that smooth wash and uh, for this painting I think I used like the biggest brush I probably used was a six round brush then I went down to a four round brush and this that I'm working with right here to put in the red skin is a zero round brush and um, yeah so that that guy out the window he's definitely red um, and that was done using the Grumbacher uh, red and orange and that's it it wasn't like it's just such a tiny detail and these are both really tiny pieces uh, and here we go we're moving into the next piece right now da 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 um, so yeah I like I said I only want like a few pops of colors over the next few days um, and the next few pieces are going to be dedicated to the same sorry that's my mouse to the same uh, story so I, I took a big sheet of Strathmore paper that I had and I basically tore the paper into a bunch of smaller pieces because it's quicker for me to work on um, smaller pieces. I think total for this these two little pieces it took me like two hours. But that's not including the drawing time because I'm sure as you could tell by now I did not show you how I drew and inked with my Micron Pigmas which is what I used to do the line work for these guys. Um, this is another part where you could see that the the um, hair dryer works really well and all of a sudden everything was dry. That's just super satisfying for me to watch. Um, so yeah and can I just say real quick that it takes a lot to tear this like 300 GSM big Strathmore paper. It was like a 13 by 19 size sheet of paper. Um, so if you like having that hand torn edge um, but you also find it really difficult to tear the paper so that you don't just rip it in half I'm going to show you a tutorial I yeah I think I'm just gonna I'm gonna show you what I did to kind of get the hand torn feel without having to do the actual hand tearing because I just I tried so hard I tried a couple of different ways and the hand tearing <laughs> did not go well for me I wasted a lot of paper on this one um, but we're learning right we're learning together so I think maybe maybe tomorrow I'll, I'll show you guys what I did in order to get the the hand frayed edge for the pieces that are coming up so yeah again let me tell you that this is all going to be a part of one story and I will tell you when the story is over um, it's just it's a little short story that I decided I wanted to show with pictures so I don't want to go too much into the story and reveal too much because I kind of want you guys to uh, be left waiting with a little bit of mystery wondering what's going to happen next um, so yeah so with this portion of the painting it was cool to like use a window because there's usually a lot of uh, lighting that happens by a window and if you stand directly on the opposite side of a window like the wall is really dark you know a lot of the light that comes through the window kind of overshadows everything in a room if you're looking through a traditional camera. So it was cool to kind of flip the scene and do both sides. Um, and I am not an expert on lighting and shadow. I think that's something that my partner does a lot better than I do. But this uh, piece challenged me to kind of do a little bit more with it. And I think like it turned good. You guys can tell me if you notice that I did something totally wrong in the shadows. Like, please tell me. I want to know because um, I want to get better at doing this because I am still going to be illustrating a graphic novel through uh, probably this and next year. I imagine it's probably, I mean, I don't know. Hopefully I can, I can finish, um, I can finish the illustration portion relatively quickly because I do want to get this thing kind of published within the next year or so. But uh, this is uh, all to kind of help me get my skill set better so that I can uh, confidently go in and, and illustrate that graphic novel that I wrote. Um, so this is about it as far as the coloring is concerned. And the, in the next couple of seconds, I will be telling you a little bit about the story. Real quick, while well, you can see me pulling the tape off of these two pieces, um, if you want to minimize the destruction that you do to your paper when you remove the taped off area, 
I highly recommend you can see me doing it here. First of all, go slowly. Secondly, pull on a diagonal, uh, almost at like a 45 degree, and pull very slowly and piece by piece up close to the edge of your painting. Pull on in a diagonal direction, and that will minimize the amount of paper that you pull off of uh, the front of your piece. She stirred in her sleep and turned over blissfully unaware of everything as she dreamed and read. He walked up to her window, the same window he walked up to every night for what felt like eternity. He watched her sleep. All right, that's it, guys. These are the two pieces for today. I believe I will have two small pieces up for you tomorrow as well. And if you want to see how this story ends, then please come back and join me tomorrow and have a great, great Monday. Bye, everyone.